Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, 10 Tips to Rock Your Social Ad Strategy. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the absolute best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the brand new Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that DealerOn is still the only company in the industry brave enough to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. Does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads or your money back? Yeah, I didn't think so. Maybe you should check us out at our gorgeous brand new DealerOn website at DealerOn.com. And we have an awesome show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have not one, but two amazing presenters today. Alexi Veneri is the co-founder and CEO of Digital Airstrike, the award-winning automotive social media and digital engagement company. A pioneer in the automotive vertical for digital response, social marketing, and online reputation management, Digital Airstrike's mobile apps, software, and managed service platform monitor improve and manage consumer engagement for six of the largest automotive manufacturers, dozens of the top dealer groups, and thousands of retail dealerships. Before starting Digital Airstrike, Alexi was president of one of the largest automotive advertising agencies, Auto Media Blue Flame 6. She was also vice president of marketing, PR, and investor relations at Dealer Track, chief marketing officer at Who's Calling, and director of marketing for the Major League Baseball team, the Seattle Mariners. Alexi is an accomplished public speaker and author of the best-selling book, Balls, Six Rules for Winning the Business Game. And she can be reached at Alexi at digitalairstrike.com. Joining Alexi today is Erica Sietzma, Senior Vice President of Product and Strategy at Digital Airstrike, where she leads the product team and corporate strategy. Erica brings a dealership's perspective and is responsible for tailoring its products to something that impacts retail automobile dealers directly. She's passionate about bringing change to the industry to focus on the impact of customer feedback and how it drives operational changes at all levels. Prior to joining Digital Airstrike, Erica was with Mile One Automotive, where she managed corporate communications and software partnerships for all 63 dealerships. Erica has extensive automotive technology experience and has also held several sales and business development management positions at CallSource and Autobase. Erica is an avid traveler and innovation enthusiast, and she can be reached at Erica at DigitalAirStrike.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond to you by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. And please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Oh, yeah. Our good friends at Digital Airstrike, they're giving away an awesome prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win an Apple Watch. This latest technology release is a beautifully constructed compact smartwatch with solid fitness software, hundreds of apps, the ability to send and receive calls via an iPhone, and so much more. The Apple Watch is the hottest wearable tech device on the market, and it's valued at $350, and I am so jealous. And Digital Airstrike also has the industry's first social media app, for the Apple Watch, it's free, so you should definitely check that out, because guess what? It's available in the Apple Store now. How cool is that? What an awesome prize for you coming into the holiday season. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though, so stay tuned, and you could be the one winning this amazing prize today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to receive a short survey, so fill it out, because we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. Today, we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Alexi Veneri at Alexi Veneri and Erica Sietzma at Erica Sietzma. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. So let's get started. Let's learn 10 tips to rock your social ad strategy. Alexi Veneri, let's start with you. It's been a while since I've had you on my show, my friend, and I'm so glad to have you back. How are you? Good. It is so great to be back. We love your show, and you have 
the best audience ever. So I'm excited to see lots of poll participation and see everyone to the end to win that amazing prize. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. I missed you at the Women in Automotive Conference, but I will not miss you next time, my friend. So I'm so glad to have you here today. And of course, you brought your cohort, Erica. Erica, my first time webinaring with you, and I'm very excited to finally have you on the show. How's everything going? Everything is great, Eliana. Thanks so much for having me join and, um, you know, cohort, partner in crime, whatever you want to say. <laughs> but we are really excited to help all of your uh, attendees get in and really rock their social ad strategy. Yeah, and I know you have a ton of stuff to get to. So without further ado, show us how we're going to rock our social ad strategy. Where do we begin? Okay, well, the first place we want to begin, guys, is we want to help you set your objectives for this webinar and what we're going to be going over with you and what you're going to be able to take away. So the number one thing you're going to want to do when you're setting your social ad strategy, you want to determine your goals, right? You can't measure success. You can't determine if you rock that ad campaign unless you know where you're going and how you want to even get started. So step one, determine your goals. Then you're going to, we're going to teach you how to learn which of the right social networks and the best ad formats are going to be right for those goals that you set. Okay, uh, Things have changed a lot in the last year and a half, two years on the different social networks. There are a myriad of different uh, ad formats that you can choose, ad types, and they're all going to be based on what those goals are that you set. And then, of course, you're going to find out how expert targeting and the right strategy can help you really sell more cars. Because at the end of the day, we're in business to service and sell more cars. And it doesn't make sense if we're not ultimately at some point hitting one of those goals as well. Well, and, and thank you, Erica. And, you know, this stat, I don't think it's necessarily surprising, but every year we actually go out and we survey 2,000 recent car buyers. And we just ask them, not are you on the Internet, but what was the most helpful medium to help you make a dealership selection? So it was actually 2,000 car buyers this year as well as 2,000 servicers that have all visited a dealership and made a purchase in the last 45 days. And we don't, it's not a leading question, <laughs> but they came back this year and said 75% of them, not that they're just using it, but the fact that it was the most helpful. That was the primary way they made a decision about a dealership. So you really, really, really need to have a holistic strategy. You know, we love working with dealer on websites. You guys are great. You definitely work well with all of our apps and tools, and you get the value of social media, hence thank that we're doing you. a webinar today. Thank you. Yeah, and it yes, we know how important it is, so thank yeah. you for noting that. Yeah, and it has to work together, though, right? I mean, there's so many places now, and ultimately, you want to leverage the power of all these social networks and review sites to drive that traffic to that website, and it has to really work together. So this is no longer should I. It's how can I do it better than anyone else in the industry because that's where the prospects, where the car buyers are. you got to be there, and you got to be there the right way. And actually, that's going to take us into our first poll question. I love so it. Our, audience, we have three poll questions for you today, and the first one is on your screen now. I cannot stress to you how important it is for you to participate in these poll questions. It really gives us an idea of what's happening all across the country and certainly, of course, at your dealership. And we love finding out these things. So please participate in these poll questions. They really help us out. And the question's on the screen now. The question is, who handles your social ad spending over at your dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Is the answer no one? We haven't spent money on social ads. Well, I don't know, it's someone in the dealership. Is it a few people in the dealership? Or do you hire an outside ad agency to handle your social ad spending? Or maybe it's a social media reputation management vendor. Whatever the answer is, we want to know. So once we get a majority of this votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And I am happy to report a majority has already voted. Those votes are coming in fast and furious. Keep them coming. I'll keep the polls open for just a while longer. And then we can get the answers to our wonderful presenters today, and we'll see what they have to say about this. I'm curious if there is actually a right answer to this question. So uh, almost everyone has voted now. Audience, dude, you guys are awesome, and I really, really appreciate it. We're going to close this poll now. Uh, Alexi, Erica, are you ready to see this? 
We sure are. We're excited to see what the audience has to say. Okay, because you know what? It's pretty much, it's kind of spread across the board, but let's check this out. All right, 19% of today's audience, they admit no one handles their social ad spending. They haven't spent money on social ads like ever. That's 19%. That's almost a fifth of today's audience. That's actually higher than I suspected. I don't know about you guys, but we're going to find out in just a second. Almost half, 47% said, yes, someone in the dealership does actually handle that. Some one person does handle that. Now, only 3% of today's audience said it's actually a uh, re responsibility of a few different people at the dealership. 17% of today's audience said that they hire an outside ad agency to handle their social ad spending. And then the remaining 14% of today's audience said that it's a social media reputation management vendor who takes care of all of that for them. So Alexi and Erica, Half, almost half of people said it's someone in the dealership. Is there a right answer to this question, though? You know, I think it really, it's specific to the dealer itself. I would say one thing, that 19%, this is an opportunity for you guys. <laughs> so I would, for anyone not spending anything today, I would look at your full monthly ad spend that you're doing wherever you're spending money, right? And I would talk to either your outside agency or if you have an in-house marketing director or if you've not yet actually consulted with a company that specializes in this, I really would consider it. It is honestly amazing the ROI you can get and we're going to show you guys some examples, real dealer examples. Oftentimes, you can just reallocate a small amount from somewhere else. So this does not have to be an additional spend and you may find that by investing in social ads, you can actually get a higher return and ultimately drive more leads by spending less overall on a month-over-month -month basis. So I would really, really encourage that. I think for the dealers that are doing it in-house, we love that you're taking that initiative. Um, most dealers we find that when they say they're doing it in-house, in they're just doing promoted posts. We're not saying that's a bad thing, but it's, it's truly not harnessing the full power and potential of what you can do today. So across the board, you know, I commend everyone that is doing something, but make sure you're really looking at metrics, you're testing the new ad formats. We're going to show you guys a lot of those today, and we encourage you to, you know, whomever you're working with, in-house, an agency, a vendor, really challenge them to make sure they are focused on the goals as we talked about. You want to set some goals. And you want to make sure it is about lead scan. You know, it's not just about likes anymore, for example. And to that point, actually, it gets us into, um, you know, what are those results I can get? For those of you that aren't even playing this space, there's some pretty powerful um, examples of real-life uh, customers that are doing ads. And look at this one. Three vehicles sold. It was on a $714 ad spend. That is huge, 1,176 website clicks, and that's a 61 cent cost per click. So look at this one over here, a 34 cent cost per click for 8,813 website uh, uh, clicks over. So it is extremely, extremely powerful. This, you know, I like to say there's gold and then there are ads. You know, there is a lot going on here. And then I love this one, best performing month in four years for this dealership, and they did a $700 ad campaign. It's a 40 uh, cent cost per click, um, but then look at all the foot traffic that they then drove into the dealership. So we're going to talk about how do these dealers get these kind of results. What we're seeing is social advertising outperforms all traditional mediums in nearly every digital ad format from both the CPC and CPM basis. I hate CPMs. I'm not a fan of CPMs. I think that is a tier one um, solution. If you're buying anything on a CPM, I think it's a fail. Um, but, when, but in order to get those great results, they really have to be targeted, optimized, and tracked. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. That's right. So let's start with the end in mind, right? Just like anything you're going to do, you really want to have goals. So if you're going to spend, you know, even 10 bucks, why are you doing that? It shouldn't just be for fun because you want to click the, you know, boost post button, right? Right, right. Bucks. It's got to be for a reason. I don't care what you're spending. Have a goal. So are you trying to promote content where you're trying to get just a message out? And sometimes that's okay, right? Sometimes that content 
might be that, you know what, you want to really help your community support a charity. Um, or you just want people to know that you've got, you know, new models in stock, and maybe you're highlined and you're really not going to be pushing specific incentives and offers. Maybe you're promoting a specific event. You're doing a special weekend event. You want to get people down to the dealership. You want them to RSVP. That's a great goal to have. Maybe you are trying to build audience. You're trying to reach some new folks, right? Are you then going to go and pull out data from your CRM, your GMS, to go find liker audiences? Do you want to go find everyone that is the friend in the right demographic of everyone that's purchased from you in the last year, that's a goal. That's to build an audience, and you can do that. Ultimately, though, we really like to drive leads, and it is about leads today with social ads. So how are you driving those leads? How are you tracking them? Where are you sending people? You do not just have to keep people, let's say, on Facebook if you're running a Facebook ad campaign. You can drive them to specific landing pages to your website. You really want to have those goals in mind. Absolutely. And so then that takes us to now that I've set my goals, I've decided that, hey, I want to drive leads. Well, which social network is the best for that or is right for this particular campaign? So let's talk about the different social networks. And we're going to focus on uh, three networks. We're going to talk about Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So the first one, Facebook, right? They're kind of the gorilla in the room. Uh, but like a really friendly, fun gorilla that wears like <laughs> cute little sweaters and stuff. So a couple pros of Facebook. They are the largest social network. No ifs, ands, and buts around it. For us here in the U.S., 1.3 billion plus uh, global, but here in the U.S., it is the largest social network. And yes, even millennials are on there. So I, I know they're Snapchatting, but they are also on Facebook. Believe me, our entire office, we have a ton of millennials. I think we're what, 80% millennial here? Yeah. And you better believe they are on Facebook. So um, best targeting. Uh, for ads, including owner and tender targeting, and best user match rate. So that's going to get really important when we start getting into targeting, some smart things Facebook has done. Uh, one of the smartest things they did is they built out an automotive-specific team years ago. Um, so I, I'm really impressed with what they've pulled together in just the last two years. They will also optimize the best ad variation and placement for you, so if you don't have a lot of time to spend on doing that. now. That being said, do you necessarily want to let their optimization just run? Maybe not, right? Uh, you wouldn't do that with Google, um, you know, in your Google AdWords account. You don't just let Google run your optimization, or sometimes you find out that all of a sudden your campaign went through all of its money in the first three days of the month. You're like, wait, wait, what? Google. So uh, Facebook a little bit the same way. Um, they also get a little tricky if you try to get too cute with your threshold and start to set things. They will just turn those ads off and not even run them. Um, and it is more cost effective than search, display, traditional, just about everything. Now one thing, Alexi briefly mentioned this, we're not saying don't do search, absolutely not. What we're saying is if you're spending 50000 a month all in on your advertising budget, or you're spending 35000 a month all in on your total ad budget, we're not asking, saying that you should spend more than 35, that you should start looking at that mix and swapping in and out numbers. And we tend to find a lot of the dealers that we work with, their ad budgets come down because they are getting high ROI on these. Cons on Facebook. Uh, prices on the rise. Um, certainly it's a supply and demand world. Now, one of the things we're seeing with Facebook, though, is because of how smart and because of those all of those targeting options, um, we're not seeing it. Uh, skyrocket in the bidding as much as we saw with Google. I mean, granted, it's young. It's only a couple years. Um, but the, the supply is actually much, much larger. Uh, so it's, it's definitely, while it's rising, it's not too terrible. That's right. I would totally agree. Well, let's jump over to Twitter. So what are some Twitter pros? Well, you know, Twitter users are super loyal. They are 67% more likely to work with a business that they follow on Twitter. So that's, that's something really good to know. You, you do want to be there, and they are incredibly loyal, which is great. And, you know, Twitter also has some really great keyword and competitive handle targeting. So if you're not familiar with how that works, um, more than happy to go into a whole webinar, I think, around that. But, but definitely if you're working with an agency, if you've got somebody in-house that has even tried this, make sure they're trained in how to do this because it can really make a difference in the performance of your ads. Now, in terms of cons, 
you know, they do have a lower match rate than Facebook for users overall just because of the low percentage of user mobile numbers. So just, just keep that in mind when you're testing it. You don't want to go out there thinking you're going to get exactly the same match rate as you would if you're running Facebook campaigns. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you're uploading a list, you know, to Facebook versus Twitter, um, because Facebook was really smart. Like one of those things Alexia was saying earlier where, you know, they made some smart moves and they knew that uh, people change their email address and have more email addresses than they do mobile phone numbers. So I don't know if you remember, uh, probably four years ago, uh, Facebook started to get smart. And when you were trying to log in, they were like, hey, what, for security reasons, uh, uh, we need your mobile phone number. <laughs> and it had nothing to do with security. It had to do with so we can advertise to you better when people upload lists so we can match you to Axiom ah, database ah, reasons. That's I they knew it. I, oh, yeah, I, you know. I <laughs> never, yeah, so. ever, ever gave them my phone number. And they kept, and they must have asked me a hundred times. Is that what they were doing? I know. <laughs> Twitter's right. doing it, and so funny. I like to think it's because I said something to Twitter two years ago, and I, <laughs> I totally kind of raked them across the coals because I was like, "Dude, we upload a list into your database, and it sucks. It matches terribly." And I said, "You know, Facebook has a mobile phone number. You guys really should have that. Be asking for it." And what's crazy is Twitter started as a mobile solution. It was texting. That was the only way it did it. But then, as soon as the app came along, they just very short-sighted got rid of that. So it's really funny. But now Twitter, my Twitter account's been trying to get my mobile phone. So um, so it's pretty funny there. And then, of course, you know, they're a little further behind. They don't have the depth. They don't have the automotive team that Facebook has. They have less targeting options and a less robust back-end tool. So if you were a single-point dealer, that might not be as hard for you. Um, but for any of you dealer groups, or for any agencies on here that are trying to manage multiple Twitter profiles and ads, it's kind of a nightmare, not going to lie. So if anybody from Twitter is on here, get on that. You've got like a bajillion developers. Fix that. <laughs> Come on. So now, Alexa, let me tell us a little bit about Instagram. I would love to. Man, we got the caffeine flowing today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Instagram, um, the majority of them are under the age of 35. And if you are really focused on going after those millennials. And I really think every brand should be focused on this. So one thing that we find, because we absolutely do engage with millennials, consumers that are in market, they're not as brand loyal, right? They're not as focused on, oh, I need this specific vehicle, this specific brand. We can get them in a Chevy. We can get them, you know, really in any vehicle if you give them the features they want. And they're going to do their research. And they are on Instagram. And of course, um, you know, you're going to see a lot of similarities with Facebook. So there's a lot of effective targeting. And that's really thanks to Facebook developing tools now that they're, they're a company that's combined. Uh, Instagram ads allow you to drive traffic directly to offers with a call to action button. And this is really, really cool. So as we talked about, we always want to have a goal in mind. We love it when you absolutely have targeted ads. So social advertising is no longer about kind of just being at a cocktail party and <laughs> having a conversation that is so long ago. You have to have something very specific, and we love call to action. Call to action about, you know, register, you know, to go for a test drive, or be one of the first to know when this new maker model's out, or service offers too, right? There's a ton of, ton of people that are really going to be receptive if you want to market holistically anything and everything in your dealership. It is a newer offering, so it does allow you to reach people that others are not trying to target yet. They're going to be less flooded with a ton of other advertising. And keep in mind, it's not just automotive advertising, although that's what we always think about. But, you know, there are other industries and businesses that are going after these audiences. So it's nice that you're going to have less clutter going on, and you're probably going to get more mind share. Now, there are some cons. There's just less engagement because they can't share posts, right? So that is a little different. It's not exactly the same as Facebook. And it does tend to be a little more expensive per click. Um, but you know what? It's still way less than a, really anything else out there, i got to say. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I have a friend, actually, who works over at Instagram. And he was telling me, I mean, now that Facebook, you know, you can do all of your Instagrams right through your Facebook ad manager right now, um, that it is, Facebook has gotten really smart about it, and what they're doing is they're they're segmenting the audiences, and they're knowing if someone's more active on Instagram, 
um, than they are Facebook, well then they'll push the ad over to Instagram versus Facebook. So they're doing some really smart things. I really have to hand it to them. So smart actually that the uh, Instagram ads team isn't really uh, needed that much anymore. He's getting a little bored with his job because they're doing so much already through Facebook and, and doing it in a really smart way. So Instagram definitely a player, which funny enough, Alexi, I spoke about ads at NADA. Instagram wasn't even on the map yet because it was only private large spends. Um, so it's pretty crazy how quickly things. That was just earlier this year. Yeah, exactly, yep. exactly. All right, well, looks like it's time for another poll question, guys. That's right. Your second of three poll questions is on the screen now. We'd love it if you got as much involved in this one as you did in the last one because that was awesome. So here is the question. If you have used social ads, which ad objective do you feel delivered the most value for your dealership? We'd love to know the answer to this. Please select one of the following answers. Is it the ads that advertise dealership as a whole? Is it the ads that highlighted specific vehicles and incentives? Did you feel the ads that offer customers a coupon or a special were the ones who got you the most bang for your buck? Or maybe it was the ads that featured a community event that your dealership was involved in. Or maybe it's the last answer, which is all of the above, because social ads just plain rock. We don't know what the answer is, but we want to know what's happening at your dealership. And the only way we find out is if you vote in this poll. We really appreciate it. And while the votes are coming in, I'm going to remind the audience, of course, that we're going to be getting to a Q&A session after Erica and Alexi have uh, shown their entire presentation. So if you want extra help, on how to rock your social ad strategy, believe me, there is no better place for you to find out than right here today during this webinar. Get your questions in and let the experts over at Digital Airstrike, and believe me, they are, there's nobody better than them. Let them help you, okay? We're gonna help you through this and make 2016 the year of social ads for your dealership. Promise you, it's gonna be a good stuff for you. Okay, now that most of the votes are in, Alexi, Erica, are you ready to see this? Because I didn't know no, how this... We're, we're, yeah, we're excited to see what, what everybody's saying. Yeah, I didn't know how this one was going to turn out. Uh, this one was a question I was actually really looking forward to asking. So here we go. Let's close this poll and share the results. Okay, 23% of today's audience say the ads that advertise the dealership as a whole is the ones that they think had the most value for them. Now, another 23% said they thought it was the ones that uh, highlighted specific vehicles and incentives. So we got an even split on that. Now, we got 10% yeah. 10, 10 of today's audience said they loved the ones that offered the coupon or the special. They really thought those worked for them. 13% said it was the ads that featured a community event, which when you think about it, there were more people who thought that the community event ads were more effective for them than the ones for the specials or the coupons. Now that was interesting in itself, of itself. And then finally, the majority, 30% of today's audience, so a third, thought it was all of them, all social ads, all across the board, they all have value. So does that help you out, Erica and Alexi, figure out what's, what's going on or is that what you thought was gonna happen? Yeah, no, it's actually really interesting um, to see what all of you uh, are finding value in. And, you know, I think that each of them, kind of like we talked about at the beginning, each deliver their own set of value. But it's never going to be as valuable if you don't have all the other pieces in line. So I can pick an event ad, let's say. But if I'm not properly targeting, if I'm not properly putting kind of the in-store processes in place to follow up on those pieces, then it may not add that much value. So I'm curious as we go through the rest of this and some of the other strategies to kind of enhance each of those different uh, goals, um, if people will take it away, try it again, and maybe get more value out of the different uh, ad types that we show here. Yeah, and just to let you know, there was, remember, 19% of today's audience who've never taken out a social ad at all and those people couldn't Absolutely. participate in this particular question so they had no way to vote and as many of them wrote in to tell me so I'll just ah. all right let's get back to your presentation which by the way ladies I've already tweeted this out you guys are killing it today killing it keep going well thank you um, so as we talked about earlier you know you want to also really pick a different campaign or test multiple campaigns that will match your specific goal, right? So let's show you some real examples. We love showing dealers 
other dealer examples with results. That's what we're all about here. So let's talk about what, what could a promoted post look like, and this could be to drive engagement. So check this out. So Norm Reeves Honda, they had over 1,000 engagements, 429 post likes. That's the likes just on that post, and all it cost was $199, and it ran for 30 days. So definitely, if you're just about kind of that engagement on your page, that is a really inexpensive way to do it, and what a great ad. Now, looking at, you know, building your following, right, you do maybe have goals to get some more people there. So look at what this Jeep dealer did. They reached, this is pretty amazing, over 200,000 people. And on this post, over 5,000 of them said they liked it, and that's less than 50 cents per like. So, I mean, that's, that's amazing, right? And you're not going to get this unless you're advertising. There's just no way. I don't care how, how creative you are. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. If you go and look at Pollard's uh, page, their audience uh, for their page, this is really page like ads about building your following on your page. They have grown so much. Now, they have the benefit. They do customize Jeeps, so they've got some really great stuff on their Facebook page that enthusiasts really get into. But we're going to talk about them a little bit later and how growing their organic audience ended up helping them. So we'll talk more about that. Yeah, and just if you're not into this super duper custom, you know, customization on the models, every dealer I know has some amazing cool cars. And a trend we're also seeing is, is just maybe do some feature shots, right? All the new models are coming out with great new features. You know, take a, take a photo of something going on in the interior. Use some stock that your manufacturer gives us. But if you are the only one talking about it, you're the one that's going to seem like you've got this special vehicle, this new feature, you know, going on. If no one else is seeing it, you're going to get that traffic. So every single dealer is something cool to talk about for sure. Now, I love this. This is a website traffic ad. I know our friends at Dealer On like this too. <laughs> so we love driving people to very specific vehicle detail pages. And time and time again, we hear back from our dealers that we've not only just driven the traffic, but their leads then from those VDPs go through the roof when there's an ad buy behind it. It's so amazing to track the ROI on that. So this ad, you know, cost just over a thousand bucks. They reached over seventy six thousand people and look at those website visits. I mean that is incredible. I know dealers that don't get that in a whole month. Um, you know, for everything they're doing, they don't get that much traffic, right? So, so check this out. And, and that was spread over 90 days. So you don't just have to spend it all at once. If you look at that on a monthly spend, that's incredible. I mean, you're spending, what, just over 300 bucks, 400 bucks? Not even 300. You know, yeah. I mean, it's a amazing. Over 300, yeah. yeah, a little over it for, to get those results. It, it's really incredible. And again, I would just go back to your full marketing budget, everything you're spending money on, and just reallocate a little bit. Go back to your other vendors that you've been, you know, very loyal to for years and years and years and years and ask for a little bit of a discount. You don't have to lose anything, but it's so worth tracking this. And honestly, all of these campaigns should work with everything else you're doing, right? So if you're targeting something this weekend, let's say, in a specific TV spot, well, get that creative. Make sure that same campaign's also reflected in, you know, honestly, in your social ad strategy. And one thing too, Eliana, this is great for DealerOn, which, you know, uh, kudos to DealerOn and your mobile response of your new chameleon platform because this is huge. Um, with the website traffic ads, as Alexi is saying, you know, that's going to drive obviously to your website. And what we see is 97% of our clicks on ads, and if you <laughs> take away rural North Dakota, um, it's 97%. Uh, they drag the average down a little bit. Why, why, are, um, we, why are we taking away rural North Dakota? <laughs> <laughs> North Dakota, if they're included in our numbers, it drags it down a little bit. They use desktops a little bit more there in North Dakota. Bad I think they have bad cell service. <laughs> um, but I will say, guys, whenever we have a dealer say, oh, I'm getting bounce rates, man. Like, oh, I look at my bounce rate. We go in and we look at it. They say it just like they that. They say it just like that. That's, those are most of our clients talk like that. Um, <laughs> so, Or it's just me, either way. Um, but when we go to look at it, it's nearly 9.5 out of 10 times, it's because their mobile website is terrible. It's terrible. And that's why it's so important, guys, to look at your website provider. And if you're not already with someone like a dealer on that has really well done mobile responsive sites, because again, we're driving them in and we're driving to that VDP in a lot of cases. And if it is not mobile responsive, if there's all this wacky stuff on there, I mean, you just really have to watch that, and you've got to test it and test what these people are going to see, especially when we talk a little bit later. You know, we think about service. Man, 
Trying to drive someone into a service scheduler on mobile? Nightmare. If anybody from X Time is on this, get that fixed. Come on. So nobody wants to be <laughs> typing in their VIN on their mobile phone. So, so there's definitely smart things we can do. We're already seeing companies start to integrate Facebook lead capture. So uh, even on your website, so someone I could connect if I'm in driving into a VDP, instead of me having to type my information on because we know all of these guys are coming from mobile, I can actually connect and log in and send my information in just with a Facebook connector. Absolutely. Well, let's move on to event ads. Everyone that knows me knows I love a good event. This one is really <laughs> cool. I wish I could have gone to this one. Um, how awesome that Legacy Ford was throwing a watch party. Um, amazing. I wish it was Seahawks versus Cardinals, but <laughs> that would not have made sense for where they're located. I get it. Um, but look at this attendance. They drove in literally 138 new found people. These are people that didn't register any other way. It was only because of this event ad that was pushed out, and the cost was only $283. And it was only six days, right? So look at today. You could be already scheduling something for this weekend. Think about it today. You can turn around a campaign today and get 138 people in your dealership yeah. to watch something this Sunday. How it, cool is that? It is. It's really a game changer. Like, you know, I think back when I was at mile one, you know, and our dealerships would want to do these, you know, tent sales, and they're going to have the fire truck and the clowns and the hot dogs and all this goofy stuff. And then how, what, how could we advertise it to our customers? Our only option was email, right, with this awesome open rate and <laughs> then radio so we pay 20 grand for Bob the DJ on the radio to promote our weekend event and yeah, it was terrible crazy. and we saw nobody show up and then you know there went 30 grand and we sold ooh, five cars and it, I mean it was just really frustrating so I think this is a really great alternative no it's amazing so so really guys again going back to goal setting know your goals and try all of these different campaigns. Video ads, oh my gosh, hopefully you guys have noticed these. Uh, I'm assuming everyone even just for personal uses on Facebook, but I love how smart Facebook was that it shows up in your news feed and it literally doesn't even like play the sound. It starts playing right when you're in your feed. It kind of grabs you. Um, it, it's just so cool and they've got so much higher retention brand recall than TV ads. It's a fraction of the cost. And you can retarget people who viewed part or all of your video again. Yeah. So it, it gives you kind of like a, a double shot at this, right? I mean, it, it's really, really amazing. Now let's talk about some of the newer ad formats. So one of the big ones that we're really having, we've got dealers seeing amazing success with, is the mobile lead gen ads. So some of the pros, no more landing pages. You get to keep users right on Facebook, right? So this is where if I were to hit sign up over here on this ad, it's going to break down a little ad for, a lead form. It's going to take my information. So you can capture the customer information with only a few taps by the customer. Again, think of that high mobile propensity. So no more manually filling out forms. And we have seen a huge increase in submission rates. So prior to this, we had to drive people to a landing page with that lead form on it or you know, even on the VDPs. So now we're actually able to create kind of like little tiny through the ads. It's like a little tiny baby VDP. Um, and using our ads for that, we are really seeing great submission rates there. A couple little cons. Um, is it's not sending users to the dealership website. So uh, no retargeting there, right? So if we do a website, uh, a, a website traffic ad, and if they hit your website, we're going to, with our Facebook pixels, we can retarget them, right? So we can retarget them when they come back to Facebook. Um, this, we don't have that. And the way to get leads is a little tricky. So you have to manually download them. Um, from there, but again, we're seeing a big conversion here, right? So 479 on this uh, clicks, but 24 leads, so that is huge. And let me just show you where you get those leads from. So this is a pro tip. If you haven't started learning this, definitely get familiar with this. You have to be a page admin, but you're going to go to your publishing tools on your uh, Facebook page. You're going to go to lead ad forms. All right, because you can't get it. It doesn't notify you. It doesn't send you an email. It doesn't send you a message. This stuff isn't going into your CRM. Okay, and then you have to click on whatever that lead form was, right, whichever one it was, and then download it. And again, only page admin. So a little bit of a trick there. Uh, Facebook says hopefully that will be changing soon, but right now it is a bit cumbersome um, and not as uh, powerful as what we're going to see a little bit later from Twitter. 
That's right. Well, I love carousel ads. I just love this. It's so, so cool. So this is where you actually, it, it automatically, with like a swipe, you can see multiple ads, all in one ad, really. Yep. And the ad that's clicked on most will move to the front of the carousel. There is a call to action. And and look at this spend. So, you know, spending less than 500 bucks, you're going to get 350 website clicks, 22 brand new qualified leads, and this dealer sold five cars directly from this. I mean, that's that's incredible at that cost per car. Let's do a new... Yeah, new, that's new really right. yeah exactly. Forget cost per click, let's go cost per car. Um, local awareness. So again, talking about some, some different goals, right? You maybe just want to find some new folks. And you can have contact actions such as call now or get directions. Send message right from the ad. Make it very, very easy for people to get a hold of you. Yeah, I mean, what's great about this is it's a little different. Previously, when you do geo-targeting on Facebook, it was looking for how people registered their Facebook page, right? So for me, I think mine might still say I live in New York City and I moved to Scottsdale. So I don't know if I've updated that. So any Scottsdale ads wouldn't be finding me. But now with local awareness, it's actually using my mobile device to know where I am. You know, if I am around Scottsdale a lot, now I'm starting to see Scottsdale ads through local awareness. And again, how great that the call to action is call now. And I can click to call right from that ad. Uh, this is extremely powerful for getting direct contact. And I love offers. I'm personally a little addicted to online shopping. And I have bought a lot of things through Facebook. I love getting offers. And you can set up your own promo code to track your upsells and revenue. How great that you don't have to share your coupon revenue or offer revenue with someone like a Groupon, right? You can do it yourself now. And you can reach people. I mean, it's so easy, and they will click that, and they will get that offer. Our studies every year, and it's growing, say that they're very likely. Over half of the people say they've seen ads, and they're likely to click it to buy something, like an old change offer, right, or a discount or something off parts uh, and service. So definitely try this. We're seeing great response. And what I love about this is you can put in your the expiration date of the offer to build urgency. So let's say it's going to end, you know, by Thanksgiving. So I can put that in. Facebook will email and remind the customer that that offer that they uh, claimed is about to expire to really push them to come in and redeem that offer. So uh, we just recently had some great success uh, with a dealer doing that in service, and they just killed it. And they did a great job of tracking everything uh, with promo codes, and they saw a huge lift in their service business there. So with Instagram, talking a little bit about that, now we change this up a little bit because this is actually a new Facebook ad format. As I said before, you're managing it through Facebook. So it's included as a Facebook distribution channel, similar to mobile or the third-party app. You don't have to create separate campaigns. So that ad could serve you know, through Facebook, it could serve through Instagram or perhaps in their mobile, uh, their third-party app network. Um, but again, that makes it really convenient. And as we said before, they use uh, visual imagery, telling your story and really enticing that audience to take an action. They also have a carousel option. So again, similar to the Facebook version, that allows you to have multiple opportunities to trigger an action from that customer and multiple visual touch points so that you're kind of almost A-B testing within the same ad. And again, there's three ad types. For Instagram right now, there's image, there's video, so they were quick to bring video into the play, and then the carousel. So a, a newer ad format, uh, Instagram, but coming out now with multiple formats right within one. And again, great results here. 16 leads, $31 cost per lead, which is great because these are highly qualified buyers based on the targeting we're going to talk about. So getting the targeting, there's a number of ways you can now target audiences, and, and not everyone is aware of it. So to start off with custom audiences, you can just go ahead and target your own database. So you pull in your own database, and you're going to then find them on the social networks. This can be current customers. It can be customers that haven't been in for a while. It can just be prospects in your CRM. Basic targeting will then allow you to use data points to find specific things, such as such as you know, people in market that have specific interests, demographics, and geolocation targeting. Now, I love the advanced targeting myself, so this is where you can overlay with DLX Pulse Targeting. And it allows you to serve up ads to your brand's owners and intenders. 
So these are literally people that, based on a number of data points, we know that they're in market. They're coming off a lease, right? Um, they're coming off a warranty. You can go find them with that advanced targeting. It is so specific. You just can't do that with just, you know, Google search, right? You don't know who's going to click that. It can cost you three bucks a click and you have no idea who's clicking on that, right? This way you're going to really target your ad spend to the people that are most likely to be in market to buy in service. Absolutely, and just a couple examples of how really using targeting, getting smart. You know, you picked your goals. You know, now you've said, okay, I want to be on Facebook, and I want to use this ad format. Now you've got to target it to really get specific, to make sure you're hitting the right people, and it's not spray and pray. So when you do that, no matter what that goal was, whether it was event, whether it was uh, uh, video views, you want to make sure it's the right people. So these are some great examples of some huge ROI. Uh, that we see when we're layering in targeting. So, you know, we have a lot of dealers that come to us that have been trying it on their own, and they're like, eh, you know, it's not that great. And then we help them, we show them that with better targeting, with, you know, that tied into the right format, they're actually able to drive these better results. One thing there, a pro tip, monitor the comments on ads. This is actually a fail we see from um, a, a lot of companies, whether that be a dealership or an agency, you know, a lot of these ads are running as dark posts. So you're never going to see them on your Facebook page. But they absolutely get comments, right? They're, they're hitting a lot more people than your organic uh, traffic, those even on your page. Even if you're boosting a post, these, um, we always see them to have a wider reach. And this is a great example. So I mentioned that Pollard Jeep, you know, they do those custom Jeeps. And there happened to be a customer comment on their page and we helped respond on their behalf. We got with the dealership and uh, responded, and they were able to sell that customer, James, a $105,000 Jeep. Wow. So he was able to trade in his Jeep and buy a new one. So uh, huge. I want to know what James does. For <laughs> I know. I like James. <laughs> um, so we want to, you know, make sure you're monitoring that. It's not enough just to post, guys. You've got to monitor what's happening. You've got to be involved. You've got to take action. Absolutely. Well, you've also got to be strategic, right? So you want to align things like Twitter with design strategy in line with Facebook. Aligning your strategy will really help you guys perform A-B testing. Everything in marketing, as you know, is a test. It just is, right? And as things evolve, so you want to get out there and you want to see what's going to perform best for you and your market. So the offer, the campaign, the creative, and the targeting. And really see which one's driving those BDPs, engagement, as well as just more Twitter followers. And here's something uh, that you may not know. The average tweet only has a lifespan of three minutes, unless you put dollars behind it with an ad spend. So you really got to have those dollars there. And what's great is Twitter doesn't filter their ads. So even with Facebook, you do get ad filtering. Just because you put money on it doesn't mean everybody's going to see it. Um, and with Twitter, they don't have that filtering for now. So it definitely is, while it's a smaller uh, segment of the customer population, like we said, before, it is a very rabid segment of the population, so you want to get that message in front of them. One of the great things, so Twitter was first to have this, so we did mention that Facebook finally has their uh, mobile lead gen ads where a couple taps, you can put in your information. Well, Twitter's had it forever. They've pretty much had it since the start of their ad program, where as a Twitter user, I can click on an ad, put my information in, and it will actually send that to you. Right, so I can have a custom call to action there as a dealer, like register now, um, and the customer click, click, and you've got my information as the customer, and it will drive email leads. They email to you, unlike Facebook, we got to goofy around, you got to go into the platform. So I do love that about Twitter. The one con, the conversion is not as high as Facebook. So when we tested the lead gen ads, um, you know, these they call them Twitter cards on Twitter, and part of it is because you know the population is less. Now what Twitter is going to tell you is, okay, yeah, you know what, our cost per click might be 250 but guess what, our people are more loyal, right? So if they are following you, if they're interacting, if they're on Twitter and they're interacting with your ad, they're going to convert higher. So again, if you're doing this, you really want to test that. And don't forget to target. <laughs> I am the target reminder woman today. Uh, demographics, too, and interest targeting. Retargeting as well, tailored audiences. When you guys are bulk uploading of, of data. Um, and just remember, they don't have as high of a match rate as Facebook as because of that about. lack of mobile phone. The yep. goofy phone thing. But still, um, it's still going to be better than really anything else you guys are doing anywhere else. Keyword retargeting. And again, going back to Polk DLX integration for sure. Um, and you know, Conquest, you guys can go ask 
after competitive makes, models, and handles. How awesome is that? And as we were just saying, they are way more engaged and they're more likely to buy with promoted tweets. So really, really, guys, you got to test it. Um, we strongly recommend it. And that takes us to our next poll question. Eliana, let's take it away. Ah, our last poll question of the day. On your screen now, audience, you've been so awesome about answering these questions, and I expect nothing less from you right now. So here it is. We want to know, how much of your monthly advertising budget do you allocate to social media advertising? We want to know. Please select one of the following answers. Is it none? Is it not much, but just a few hundred dollars here and there? Maybe not consistently, but you do something, right? Maybe it's 25 to 50 percent of your budget, 50 percent or more, or 100 percent. We love social ads. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the, sh the poll and share the results. Oh, by the way, Alexi and Erica, I wanted to let you know, Christy wrote in when you were talking about carousel ads. She was very, very excited, capital letters and lots of exclamation points. She says, I love carousel ads. They are amazing, and they work so well. So thank you so much for that, Christy. And thank you. That's great. That's what she's talking about. I agree. <laughs> I and not to be outdone, Ray wrote in, and he said, our slideshow ad and I want you to, now let's get the numbers right because the numbers are astounding to me. The, his said, he said his slideshow ad reached 27,000 people and he got 1,300 site visits in two weeks for a total investment of $349. He says social ads rock. So glad we're having this website today. That's impressive. Awesome. That is a great result. That is very cool. impressive, Ray. Congratulations on that. Keep up the good work. And let's, oh, we got a smiley face from Christy. Okay, uh, audience, your votes are awesome. Thank you so much for voting. Wow, wait till you guys see this. Because <laughs> you know I can see the results. All right, here we go. Let's close this poll and share the results. Audience, you rock. Thank you so much. All right, Erica and Alexi, here we go. 8% of today's audience, and I have a pretty savvy audience. But 8% of today's audience, they admit they spend no money, none, on social advertising. But the majority, 69% of today's audience, said they spend not that much, just a few hundred dollars here or there, you know, I guess every time they have something interesting to put out there. And then we have the remaining 23%. So nearly a quarter said that they have about 25% to 50% of their monthly advertising budget wow. allocated to social advertising. Now, no one said 50% or more, and no one said 100% or more. So everything is, is you know, below that 50% mark or none at all. So um, I think that people need to try 100%. Let's be really ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that. I mean, it's amazing. And we've, Eric and I have both worked with so many dealerships over the years, and they would literally just throw money at something. Oh, let's try that. Well, I'm like, what? Wait. <laughs> so why not uh, definitely try that for social advertising? But I, I do love you've got some folks in there spending. Those that aren't, you guys, come on. Let, let's get this going because it, it really is a no-brainer today. Um, you won't be disappointed. I mean, and we, we like guarantee results because it's just, it is such a no-brainer. All right. Well, thank you for the poll. Thanks for everybody that's been so active. I love it. <laughs> I do, too. And audience, if you haven't gotten in your questions yet, this presentation is going to end very, very shortly. So get your questions in for the amazing Alexi Veneri and her cohort, equally amazing cohort in crime, Erica Sietzma. And let's see if we can help you rock your ad strategy. So get those questions, and we're going to get to the Q&A session very shortly. Right, because when, when you guys really test this, I mean, here's an example, right? So we've got this dealer, in the grand scheme of things, not spending a lot, um, and look at the results. So they're increasing, you know, foot traffic, and look at those website visits, and they sold five cars. How awesome is that? So we really want you guys to test this out. And then you've got to be smart about tracking, guys. So what we've taken you through is, is you know, making sure that you know your goals, you pick the right social network and the right ad formats to hit those goals, the right calls to action, you're targeting who you're then sending those ads to, and now you've got to track the results. Absolutely, both companies 
have their own kind of native on-site tracking um, where you can see what happens on Facebook or what happens on Twitter. So that's your reach, that's your clicks on the ad, your engagement on that ad. But what happens when they leave, right? When you want to do that uh, website traffic ad, how do you track that? Well, both companies have their own pixels that you can put onto your website to track what's happening. Facebook has gotten smarter about their pickle pickles. Um, about their pickles, they really love. They can pickle They're anything. Very, very serious about their pickles audience. Yep, a lot of them I mean, are from Port Portland. That isn't a yep. tweetable <laughs> moment. That's your tweetable Absolutely. moment from today. It's all yep. about the pickles. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Um, so their pixels, they recently changed it where um, a Facebook pixel can now do the retargeting as well as conversion tracking. So it'll let you know if someone that came from Facebook actually submitted a lead and then you'd be able to see that data right inside uh, Facebook. Twitter on the other hand, you still have to have two different pixels on your site. Um, you'll have to have both the retargeting and a conversion tracking pixel, so that's two. Uh, but if you work with like a, a great website partner like Dealeron, uh, they're more than happy to install those pixels correctly for you. That is a trick. We've seen a lot of website companies not know how to install those pixels. Um, and even more, uh, taking it to the next level, not just the native site pixels, but we've started to do this with a lot of our dealers, is using Google Analytics to track everything. So really being able to, tr uh, to have a more holistic picture. So those of you that are a little more advanced, that want to see a little more detail on what is happening with those ads from different companies and compare it to all of your other referring site traffic, then we are absolutely going to suggest uh, using the Universal Tracking Manager UTM tags from Google Analytics and getting really smart about this because it does have that multi-channel attribution. Um, and additional conversion reports for our dealers that are really serious about ads, this is what they're using. Well, and this really is our, our 10 tips, so why don't you guys try a 10-day ad campaign and see if you can sell 10 cars. Legacy Ford did, right? So, and, and also really track it, not just while that ad's running. We all know today that while people are doing the research online, they're going to they're going to click on something, they may take a couple weeks to buy, and it's really impressive when you can see that this can be done. This is real. This is not myth. <laughs> it's happening. So why don't you you try it? And if you're going to do that, there's definitely some key considerations, right? So it is complicated. You don't want to just play with it. You want to have a plan just like you would with anything else. This is real money. Uh, just like sometimes if you guys have kids and they're, and they're buying in-app purchases, <laughs> as you find out later, it's real money. So this is too, right? Is that what your darling son has been doing? <laughs> A couple bills, yeah, and uh, I can tell you, he even learned how to do some uh, online shopping, which I found out later. Yeah, oh, he's five, oh, by the way. Brilliant. He's five, so. <laughs> yep, yep, so, you know, don't let people in your dealership just play with this, please. Um, and have a well-constructed campaign. Again, have your goals in mind. And remember, it's here to stay. It is pay to play. And if you're out there, it is going to generate great return for you. So we know every dealership spends money. you got to do it the right way. And this is definitely a place that you guys want to consider being. And if you want to know more specifically, you know, what can work for your store, because it is different, different brands, different markets, we get it. We will give you a free report. We'll take a look. We'll give you some free tips, no obligation. So please go ahead, hit that link, um, go to our website, and we're more than happy to give you some specific tips, as well as we're always out there just like our friends at Dealer Lawn, giving you guys lots of great information. We've got webinars around our study. You can learn about trends, and you can just, you know, learn about things on going through our blog and our website. So, so definitely don't be shy. We're here to help. So now the action item, guys. What you're going to do after this webinar, and especially there was a large chunk of you, right, that are doing it in-house. So some of you on this call, you are having to do all of this yourself. You've got a general manager who's saying, okay, we just spent $2,000 here. What are my results? So after this call, you're going to set your goals. You're going to pick a couple different goals. It doesn't have to be one. What are some things I want to do? We do have an event, a 10 event coming up this weekend, right? Um, we do have a manufacturer event that we can build something around. Or I've got, um, you know, I want to drive more traffic to my website. Set those goals. Then pick which networks you want to do it on and then pick the right ad type, okay? Which are the ad types that you want to work with? Make sure that you have good creative, make sure that you have strong calls to action, both in the copy and in the, the actual call to action button you select from the ad type and the ad network, and then create a smart audience. 
right? Be smart about your audience. Be smart about your targeting. Uh, be careful on the auto optimization with Facebook. We tend to optimize our accounts. We're constantly checking the performance um, at least daily on the performance of our ads in Facebook. Don't just set it and forget it. Um, and then measure that success. So put those conversion pixels on your site or set up your Google Analytics correctly so that you can properly track all of this and really know what were you looking for, did you hit it, what do you need to tweak, A, B, test, and start all over again. All right, so those are your action items after this call. And then we get to the, then we have <laughs> the big question mark on the screen. I love it. God, seriously, you guys, you guys rocked my world today. That was an amazing presentation. Thank you so much. Great slide deck, too. All right, audience, as a matter of fact, I'm going to remind you. Yeah, see, people are already writing in. Fantastic webinar. I agree. I agree. Um, this slide deck, we've already put it into the handouts section of the GoToWebinar interface. So if you want, you can download this slide deck directly so you can have it because it had so much great stuff in there. So go to the handout section and check that out. All right. And if you haven't gotten in your questions yet for Alexi Veneri and Erica Sietzma from Digital Airstrike, now is the perfect time to send that in. We are going to get to those questions in just a moment. Before we do, though, woo -hoo -hoo, it's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, well, I announced that our good friends over at Digital Airstrike, they are giving away the penultimate awesome prize today on the webinar. That's right. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win an Apple Watch. Oh, oh, oh. My heart hurts that I'm not able to win this, but you are. This latest technology release is beautiful. It's a compact smartwatch where you can track your fitness. It's got hundreds of apps. You can send and receive calls from your iPhone, and it just it's amazing, right? This Apple Watch is the hottest wearable tech device on the market today. It's valued at $350. Yes, I'm jealous. Can you hear it in my voice? And Digital Airstrike also wants you to know that they have the industry's first social media app for the Apple Watch. It's free, so go check it out because it's available in the Apple Store right now. It's very, very cool. you got to check it out. And all you have to do to get this Apple Watch is answer a well, it is an Apple Watch, so it's not a simple question about the presentation. So get ready, get to your keyboards. First one to write in the correct response is going to be walking away with this very, very super cool, awesome prize today. Of course, vendors, we love that you come and see the show and check it out, but we're going to ask you to please sit this one out. This prize is intended for dealership personnel only. We do appreciate your cooperation on that. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. This is not an easy question, but... It was mentioned during the broadcast. So I hope you guys were paying attention and took great notes. It's a two-part answer. I'm going to give you that hint up front. Here's the question. Good luck, everyone. What ad format and on, what, on which social network has a built-in call now feature? What ad format and on which social network has a built-in call now feature? I'm going to just make sure it has not come through yet. Oh, we have a winner. We have a winner. I was getting worried there because we were saying the wrong one. They were saying the wrong one, but we do have a winner. Okay. Whew. That made me sweat. Okay. <laughs> just so you know, the social network that we were looking for was Facebook, and the ad format was local awareness. And the first, and a lot of people were putting carousel, but that was not correct. The first person who wrote in Facebook local awareness, let me get this name right, oh my goodness, Alexandra Banas, Benas, Alexandra Benas, congratulations, you are the winner of a brand new gorgeous Apple Watch. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you, Alexandra I am writing down your name right now. Alexandra, write on in and let me know what dealership you're from so I can give you a proper congratulations. Hey, send in all your contact information so our good friends over at Digital Airstrike can get this amazing prize out to you. Ooh, I think you're from Canada. She's from Lexus of Edmonton. Congratulations, Alexandra. You are the winner of a brand new Apple Watch, courtesy of our great friends over at Digital Airstrike. Thank you, everyone, for playing along. I want to let you know, if you didn't win today, and obviously 
you didn't only Alexander won, but it's okay. We give away great prizes every week, so come on back to another Dealer On webinar, and who knows, that could be your lucky day to walk away with one awesome prize. Alexandra, congratulations. Thank you, everyone, for playing along, and of course, we got to thank our great friends over at Digital Airstrike for that excitement. Woo, that was incredible. Thank oh, you for your generosity. Well, I've got to give her a shout out. So I'm originally from Canada, so yay. <laughs> and I know Edmonton very well. And it must be getting cold up there. So she can check out all of our great weather down here in Arizona on our new watch when she gets it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks, Alexandra. Uh, I have to say, she awesome. just she just wrote in her uh uh, her mailing address, I guess it was. It, uh, I don't even. It looks like jibber jabber to me. It doesn't even look like an American. <laughs> address. So uh, probably Steel Post Rural Route Number or something. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're driving up there, but uh, that's very very cool. So awesome job. She is very very excited. She of course wants to say thank you so much. And yes, it is already snowing over there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Congratulations, Alexandra. You're a first-time winner, right? I'm pretty sure. I've never seen your name on my screen uh, win a prize. So congratulations. We do. Uh, very, very excited for you. I'm excited. I want to see the watch when you get it. Yes, she said it, it, she is a first-time winner. So thank you so much. See, it pays to show up to a dealer on webinar. All right. We are going to get to those questions. We're going to help you guys rock your social ad strategy. Alexi, Erica, you ready for some great questions from the audience? We sure are. All right, here we go. Let me scroll on up. Okay, your first question came in pretty early. This one came in from Bruce. He says, tell me more about these CPMs. He, <laughs> that was a question. What should, what should we all know about CPMs? Okay, so CPMs is going to be your, it's your cost per thousand, right? And that's typically used in display advertising because the challenge with, well, that's not a challenge. But display advertising uh, focuses more on reach and awareness. So they can't uh, advertise really in a cost per click because if you've ever looked at how many clicks actually happen on display ads, it's usually pretty nominal. And it doesn't really compare at all to a cost per click. So you'll typically see um, if someone is pricing in a CPM basis, that means they're more of an awareness in reach play and they're not a conversion play. That's why I say that's more of a tier one function, right? Your manufacturer, their goal is awareness. Their goal is reach, to let people know about it. Your goal is the dealer is to get the feet off the street into your showroom. So that's a, a big difference there. So for you guys, you want to focus more on, you know, what's your cost per uh, click, what's your cost per lead. Right. So and we're talking about that, we're talking about impressions. So that's what they're talking about. So they're basically counting all the people that could have seen it but didn't take action. Yep. You guys really want to be focused on them taking action, so doing something as in clicking or ultimately sending in a lead and hopefully buying a vehicle. I love it. And, and of course, Bruce, if you have any other follow-up questions, hey, you know you can always write on in and let me know. All right, ladies, your next question comes in from Christy. Um, Christy says, my understanding is that you don't want to pay for likes on Facebook. Still true? Thoughts? Alexi? Erica? So there's a couple of different things with likes on Facebook. So I would agree on that. One challenge that we typically have, well, there's a couple of different philosophies here. So one is, you know, we have a lot of dealers that they only have like five likers on their page. You know, they're brand new. They just started it. They've come to us. They need some help. And they don't really like going to a dealer 20 group where everybody else has maybe been on Facebook for a long time and they're still talking about likes. Even though Facebook themselves has said if they could rip out kind of the like feature on business pages, they would. Now, the flip side to that would be that example of Pollard Jeep. What they did, which was really smart, they did build up their organic audience so that they could decrease their ad spend. They're an enthusiast play, though, so it works a little different. Uh, because they do have extremely engaging content because they have all of those exciting cards and they are, you know, they work with us in sending us content where a lot of dealers don't want to mess with that. They don't want to go down that path. And again, there's a couple different philosophies there. So in reality, I probably wouldn't spend your money there. I would get some more advice. We'd have to look at your page and then we could give you some advice on what to do if you're fine. Um, you know, and, and kind of wait and see what Facebook does with business pages. There is some rumor that they might be spitting off into their own app, kind of similar to what Foursquare did. 
So it'll be interesting to kind of see what happens there. Yeah, and so, you know, if you're talking about the question around pain, I, we're assuming you mean you're going to run ads with the goal of getting people to like your page. So just to clarify, um, nobody is going out and, and paying people to like your page, for example, but if you're going to have an advertisement where that's your goal, um, as Erica said, we'd only really recommend it if you just have nobody on your page because it's more of a billboard. But keep in mind, just because somebody likes your page does not mean they're going to see your post Absolutely. in their news feed. That, that's gone. They've changed all of those filters. So actually the only thing that it will really do for you, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, you may have noticed that on some paid ads, it will say that some of your friends maybe have liked that business's page or liked your dealership's page. So it's that implied endorsement. Um, but it's, it's really honestly no longer a strategy that, that most people focus on. Very good to know. Now Christy did have a follow-up question for you too. She said, what types of Instagram photos work best? Used cars, new cars, car uh, pictures with kittens in them. What are, what are we doing here with Instagram? <laughs> I, would, I would go back to it. It's really around your, your holistic social ad strategy, right? It's not that there's necessarily one photo that's better on Instagram versus, let's say, Facebook. It has to be tied back to a goal and a campaign. Um, I always love the ones that if you could get, you know, some humans in the in the photo, that's always a great thing. Um, or get some something that's not just so generic, right? Something that's a little specific to exactly what you're promoting, such as an event. You know, why not show some people at your last, let's say, you know, football watch party in your dealership and have some fun or, or focus on something very specific. Um, you know, and it can be kind of unique and stylized. I would I would take your time with it, but there's no one magic photo you can just push in an ad. And and be careful too with Instagram. So your manufacturers, I don't know if you follow your manufacturer on Instagram. If you don't, you should. I follow all of them. Um, <laughs> they are pretty aggressive on Instagram. Um, I'm posting stock photos and I've noticed when we've done audits of dealership Instagram pages, they've got a habit of whoever they have managing their Instagram of sometimes reusing that same exact kind of regramming the manufacturer one, so they'll save it and then they'll re-Instagram it, and it's exactly the same as what was on the manufacturer one. So you've got to be a little careful there. So with the ads, you for sure do not want to use uh, stock imagery uh, from your manufacturer on Instagram because they've probably already used it, and it's going to look weird. It'll be confusing. Hmm. Okay. Christy, if you have a follow-up question, you know you can always write that in. Okay. Now we're going to get to Ray. He also has a, a question about Instagram. He wants to know, do you need to have an Instagram account for Facebook ads for it to show up on Instagram? Yeah, they for you have to have a Facebook account to push ads to Instagram. Right, and in, in Facebook you can create the Instagram account um, through Facebook, but you don't have to have an active page you created through Instagram. Facebook, you can now manage that all through your Facebook account. Really? Okay. So it used to be, yeah, it used to be you had to create an Instagram account on your mobile device through Instagram. You no longer have to do that. Facebook has taken that away. I mean, they haven't, you, I mean you could still do it, but Facebook has now made it so you can do it all through uh, their tool and you don't have to do it through Instagram. Oh, wonderful. Okay, now, now we get into what Ray really wants to know because once you brought up the word pixel, Ray has a lot of questions about pixels. Okay, so Ray says, do you have to put a new pixel with every new ad? Now, Erica, I know you were the one who, were, who initially brought up the pixels. Do you want to take this? Yeah, it's just one pixel. You only need one pixel. You don't need to do a new pixel for every single ad. Really? Right, yeah. So it would be based on the goal. So if it's lead campaign, then you would have one for leads to be able to handle that. But you don't need to create one for every lead ad that you're doing. Okay, um, Ray's follow-up question on that says, well, if you have Google Analytics Pixel already, do you need to do anything else to track those social media ads? As long as you've got that Google Analytics set up correctly and you've, you've set it up, then you don't need to do the Facebook Pixel as well. Ah, okay. But it is recommended to have both. So, Ray... You, so that you can have a balance. It is recommended to have both, but you can do it all through Google Analytics. We absolutely do that and track the campaigns through our UTM um, to be able to watch each of the different campaigns and how they function. We do that all through Google Analytics. 
Yeah, and it's, but it's good to have that check and balance, right? So you can track it in both places. And again, anything as complex as this, um, some of the people, especially those that haven't done ads before, you know, we're more than happy to help you walk you through that. Again, even if you just want a device, we could take that offline. Yeah, Ray, take them up on it. They're amazing. Um, Ray did have a follow-up question. He says, so you need a pixel for each type of ad? For each objective. For each objective. Oh, okay. So if one is for the tent sale, but another one is for this special that we're having on this truck for this month, two totally different ones. You need two separate pixels for those. So no, it's it's so it's for the objective of the ad. So if one is for specific leads, right, then you would have you can get all of your lead forms through that one pixel. I got you. Okay, Ray, do you have any follow-up questions? Send them on in because I want to make sure that we're helping you out on this because they're giving out some great information. Or our, our best advice, Eliana, for Ray is to work with our Google Analytics expert. He's a certified Google Analytics um, he, for Google Analytics implementation, um, and he's actually done services with our dealers where he goes through. So even if you're not a dealer, he can help you look at how you're setting up your tracking and your ad campaigns based on your objectives and take you through it. It's a pretty thorough analysis um, and he can even help you if you have some that are, are not working or not firing correctly, getting those set up correctly, making sure they're installed properly. I'm totally down for that too. Ray, if you get an opportunity, you should really try and work with those experts over there. Um, but he did have one more follow-up question for you. So let's see. He says, if you run a local awareness ad and an offer ad, you need two pixels, right? Local awareness doesn't have pixels. Oh. So, yep. So the answer would be no, Ray, you don't. <laughs> it's called the action driver, so it's get directions, call now, uh, send message. Right, right. Web traffic, web conversion has a pixel. Wait, what did you say? What was that last part? I said it's web traffic, web conversion ads have the pixel. Oh, okay, okay. Ray, I hope that helped you out. Uh, as always, you can always take down the phone number or email addresses of either one of our presenters and see if they could help you out after the show. All right. Oh, he says, got it? Thanks. All right, Ray. Thank you so much for being here today and asking those great questions. All right. We, we know we're a little bit over time, but we still have a handful of questions to get to. Great questions. So we're going to do that right now. So hang on tight, everyone. Here we go. Your next question, ladies, comes to you from Michelle. He, she says, how do you circumvent the fake likes from eating up your ad budgets? <laughs> that comes from Michelle. Yeah, that's why we typically, when we're doing our targeting, we're using the Polk data, and we're using that DLX targeting, because that's real people. That's matched with real users on Facebook. That's not going to match with any of those um, kind of like or bot users, you know, that's why we typically in most all of our campaigns we use the DLX targeting. When you do demographics, interests, kind of those generic ones, that's when you're going to hit more of those fake profiles. Ah, okay. Michelle, great question. Thank you so much for that. All right, next question comes to you from Jeffrey. Jeffrey says, is there a good place to get to get, to get, to go to get. Okay, is there a good place to go to get training on social media and social media ad campaigns? Ooh, what would you recommend, Alexia and Erica? Our blog. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, have a great idea. <laughs> oh, that's it? That was the answer? <laughs> and of, course, no, no, but of course, you know, again, Facebook being right out in the front here, um, a, a great spot, Facebook has done a really great job of getting out and having a tool where you can go in, you can get training, um, and it's actually just starting to launch its, their blueprint. Okay, so it's called Facebook Blueprint. You can look it up, and it's going to be a certification course, kind of similar um, to the Google, you know, you can do the analytics or the AdWords certified. Um, Facebook Blueprint is going that same direction, so you can go there and you can get certified on that. Um, and then for Twitter, they don't have as many resources. Um, you can certainly hit their site. They've got some stuff for, you know, basics on ad campaigns. But again, some of your uh, best sites is going to be kind of specialist blogs for some of the Twitter stuff. Just be careful and know, too, when you're reading stuff on blogs and other sites, 
Um, even by people, you know, on, on social media today or websites like that, a lot of it is not geared towards local retail businesses. It's geared a lot of it towards people like them that are bloggers, that are, um, you know, kind of running consulting businesses or even larger brand impression businesses. So be a little bit careful on some of that because it's not as much focused on what you're really going to care about, which is converting for a local retail business. Thank you. Great answer, Jeff. I hope that helped you out. Now, we just have a couple questions left for you, ladies, and then we'll close out this webinar. Your next question comes to you from Payton. Payton says, I heard business pages, wait, I heard business pages posts organically only reach 10% of your total page likes. Is this correct? It's actually way less than that. Facebook what? came out pretty publicly. Yeah, when I took it in ADA, it was clipping towards uh, less than 3% at the time. Now it's hovering around 2 to 1%. Um, and so, you know, again, they can even turn things off in their own personal settings to say, see nothing from certain businesses. Um, so it is, you know, organic. Depending on how you've set up your organic, if you have, again, going back to this idea of an enthusiast market, it might make sense if you've got a bigger following, right? Um, and then you're getting more organic lift. But at the end of the day, somebody's got to keep the lights on at Facebook, right? So they've got to make some money somehow, and it's through ads. And that's part of the reason, you know, but the good thing they've done is they've done smart ads that actually get real ROI. So it makes huge sense to partner up. Yeah, and I'd say the only way your organic posts are going to be found is honestly using like a toolbar. So we have a toolbar that works great on dealer on websites and you know that way you keep people on your website and they can see all of your organic posts without the ad buy that's really kind of the only way you're going to get any exposure doesn't mean you're going to get a ton of engagement folks still need to kind of click on that toolbar and maybe they're checking it out just to see what you're saying so again if you really want to do direct response call to action you've got to put money behind ads yep I love it okay last question thank you Peyton by the way great question last question comes to you from Alex. Alex says, there were several campaigns you illustrated that stated X amount of cars were sold. How are you matching back those sales? Are there database campaigns where you are reviewing sold vehicles from the list you uploaded, or are you doing this another way? Now, Alex has a great point because a lot of people are still unsure about actually tracking the ROI from social ads or just social engagement in general from social sites. So how are you guys tracking that? So that's a great, great question. Um, so, you know, I throw this one back over to say, how are you tracking your sales from AutoTrader right now? How are you tracking your sales from cars.com right now? It's tricky. That's why a lot of these companies, you know, will say, oh, our customers just walk in the door or they just do this. So with social, social kind of gets I don't know, I kind of feel like there's a little kid sometimes that gets beat up at the playground um, when it comes to like leads and sales because people are like, oh, social is just for looking at kitties and stuff like that. But really, when you look at how powerful this has been, so we've had some dealers that were doing ads that really wanted to prove to their GMs, this is working. I know it is. And anecdotally, those internet managers knew it was because they could tell through the conversation. So we started to help them get really strategic of how they could do prove it out campaigns to show they were selling cars. So a couple different things, There's, you know, for the service side of the business, promo codes. Um, we have had some dealers do promo codes that are specific to social for both service and sales so that you could track it, right? So the customer, you know, they saw this offer on Facebook and they had to use the promo code, you know, whatever it is, happy Facebook, you know. And we've had it that way. And then it had to be in-store, which this is always the tricky part in-store dealer communication. So you've got to have a good team that when you say, hey guys, when this promo code comes in, or you get a lead, you know, someone comes in asking about this one stock number, the only place we've advertised that stock number has been on Facebook. All right, so if they're coming in and they're talking about this particular offer for that car, that's a Facebook one, we have to tag it as Facebook. We had another one where he had a track and it said, in order to get this offer, ask for Paul. And the only way you could get that offer, so when someone called asking for Paul on it, and his name was on nothing else, 
they knew it was his and he was able to actually track all of them that way. So it really does, I would love to say there's an easy way to do it. Um, unfortunately, like a lot of things, which is why a lot of things sometimes don't get done in our stores, is because it takes internal communication. You've got to let the team know what the offer is, that it is unique to the social network, um, and then to be looking for it and to track it in your CRM or in the case of service, if you're not using a service CRM, in your DMS, um, and you know, use that promo code. Yeah, and there's other ways too, right? I mean, we've, we've done specific campaigns where they're registering, as we mentioned, an RSVP for an event. Well, if you're going to drive in 138 people for an event, you know that you found them through social media, especially if they're nowhere else in your database, and they came from that RSVP. And then obviously, if they buy a car, you can track that as well. I mean, each campaign can be very measured. But as Erica said, I mean, most people couldn't tell us how many cars they sold from, you know, the majority <laughs> of their advertising spend, whether it's a billboard, whether it's display advertising, I mean, you name it. And we feel that there's so many more ways now to track conversion on social ads than anything else. Plus, you're able to target out of the gate to some new audiences that you maybe wouldn't have. Maybe you're going to target by, you know, conquest markets and zip yep. codes. And so it, it becomes very, very effective and, and in some ways easier than anything else to track it back, honestly. I love it. And I told you that was our last question. I lied. This is our last question. <laughs> One more question for you came in from Jeffrey. He says, is there a few good dealers you could recommend that are doing great at social media? That's an excellent question to end on. Alexi, Erica? Absolutely. I mean, we've got a yeah, I mean, we've got a total list, so we would say just reach out to us directly. A few that come to the top of my mind right now, um, Yates, Buick, GMC, Joe Holland Chevrolet, Pollard Jeep. I mean, think of some of the examples. I mean, you just went through a pretty lengthy webinar that had a ton of examples in that, so you can download the deck, check some of those out um, that are really doing it. And again, one of the things I will say, Back to what Alexi has been saying earlier, there are two philosophies for Facebook. It is no longer a good social media presence, no longer means you have a cutesy Facebook page with all kinds of cutesy pictures of birthdays and all of that stuff on there. That's not what it means anymore. Now you can have that. You can leverage social media to show that as a dealer you are more than brick and mortar. You have a personality, you have values, you have goals but you don't have to, and if you opt not to use your social media page that way, if you opt to use social media truly for just ads since none of your followers are seeing your stuff anyways, I mean really sometimes I feel the only way of keeping a maintained page, the reason to do it in some cases for dealers that don't really care is for your manufacturer because they want to look at it and grade you on it. So I mean some people really want to use it as a way to elect this point to conquest, right. to get new customers, to sell cars, and in that case, you might go to a page that doesn't have much going on because all of their posts are dark posts, but you know what? They're clocking you all day long and bringing in more leads, more traffic, and more sales than you are through social media. So I'm saying the days of change, it is no longer, I remember two and a half years ago, people would blog about it and be like, oh, you know, you've got to put this on your page and pictures of all your happy customers. Guess what? <laughs> Look at those pictures of the happy customers. Nobody engages with them. Nobody. So it's, it has really changed. The game has changed. This is a legitimate ad sales platform. This is a legitimate traffic driver. So I would definitely say that you, I think as an industry, we somewhat need to shift our perception. There is no right and wrong on you know what someone's page should look like anymore. It's, it's definitely changed. I mean, of course, you want to make sure you've got like good image, you know, your cover image looks and some of that. But it really has changed. We've got people that, you know, the GM has told us, I don't care anymore, you know, I don't care. I don't have time to send you pictures. I don't want to do any of that. What I want to do is I want to sell and service cars. What's the best way to do that leveraging social media? And with that. And it's through ads. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I, I got to tell you, I am, I am, floored by this webinar. I thought you, I mean, you guys just rocked it. Thank you so much. That was an amazing presentation. I am, I absolutely, I loved it, loved it, love it. And audience, if you agree, I want to hear from you because we're going to send out a survey after this webinar concludes in just a minute. I got, you got to tell me what you thought. Am I the only one? I can't possibly be the only one. I want to hear from you guys, all right? So get to that survey and let me know exactly what you thought about today's presentation, all right? And 
Also, this webinar recording is going to be posted online within 24 hours, and I'm going to send you the link. Make sure you share it with the people who weren't able to make it to this webinar because they really missed a really phenomenal show, and that's a sin, and they should, they should be in on this hour of awesomeness that we just had together, all right? And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar, Ooh, and it's another doozy, how to do the perfect phone up with the un one and only Elise Kephart. Now make no mistake, the phone up is still far and away the most powerful sales tool in your dealership. Maximizing it will definitely lead to more car sales. For any salesperson, seamlessly guiding a prospect successfully past all their objections to set an appointment, it sounds simple, but many salespeople have yet to fully master the phone up and dealerships everywhere, they're losing sales because of it. Do you think you can do the perfect phone up? For such an important topic, we called in the big guns. That's right, Elise Kephart, known for her cutting edge sales techniques and incredible closing ratio. She's gonna discuss why phone skills can be the difference between making more money and losing the sale and what you can do about it. You won't want to miss this one hour event as the queen phone ninja herself will dive into a segment where she will perform two live phone up mystery shops on my show and then award $100 for the perfect phone up. This is your chance to hear from one of our industry's best and brightest. If you're ready to learn how to do the perfect phone up, you don't dare miss this webinar. So register today. Don't forget, Dealer On's weekly webinars are held Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, hey, contact me directly. I love hearing from you. My name again is Eliana. Raggio. Track me down online, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, I'm on all the automotive social networks, or you can email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on another webinar in DealerOn's continuing education series. Take care.